episode 8 and another weekend of big changes at the cottage flip. The exterior landscaping is making progress, with the old retaining walls removed and replaced along the front and side of the driveway. A new staircase has also been built and is just about complete. The siding around the back door was also replaced with the new porch construction underway. But the biggest update's in the kitchen. The cabinets were delivered last week, and the installers worked all day Saturday getting them in place. This room is no longer an empty white box, and it's so exciting to see my design plan finally starting to come to life. These cabinets were purchased at Lowe's, and I selected Craft Maid's Durham Maple Square and Onyx. I used the same brand and style in my last kitchen and loved the simple and versatile look, so it was an easy choice to use them again. Soon the butcher block counters will be installed, along with a farmhouse sink and faucet, a custom bench, flooring, and a whole lot more over the Christmas break. A matching set of cabinets was also installed next to the fireplace, providing extra built-in storage. These will be topped with custom reclaimed wood counters to match the style of the fireplace surround. While the downstairs was coming along, I was busy upstairs on this week's DIY project, stenciled walls. I had all of the walls painted white, but I wanted to preserve a bit of the original cottage charm that made me fall in love with this house in the first place. I picked out a couple stencils from Royal Design Studios to use as an accent wall for a more modern version of the 60s wallpaper. The first wall I decided to tackle was in one of the four smaller bedrooms. I thought it'd be fun to give this room a more feminine feel, so I found a floral pattern called the All Over Brocade Large Wall Stencil, which has a bit of an old Victorian look. For the color, I was leaning toward a peachy coral and stopped by Lowe's to check out the Valspar swatches. I ended up choosing Brushed Rose, which was a nice medium shade, not too dark or bright. Aside from the stencil and paint, I used a smooth foam roller, a stencil brush, a level, painter's tape, and paper towels. Before starting, I removed the wood trim at the corners of the walls so I wouldn't have to work around them. The top of the wall has the most visibility, so I decided to start my first stencil pattern there. You can choose the center of the pattern or start in the corner, but since this was more of an organic pattern, symmetry wasn't needed, so I kept it simple and began on the left side. For this first one, you'll want to use a level to make sure it's straight, since you can never trust a wall. Once it was level, I used my painter's tape to secure it in place. Then it was time to get painting. After coating my roller with paint, I squeezed most of it off in the tray, then transferred it to a paper towel to lightly remove any extra paint left on the surface. Then I began rolling very lightly, gently pressing against the wall. The key is to use several light coats, building up the layers of paint as you go. If there's too much paint on your brush or roller, or you press too hard, the paint will bleed through behind the stencil. While one light coat won't provide full coverage, I found that it wasn't necessary to recoat because you can't even tell once the stencil is removed. While the paint is still wet, remove the stencil to check for any mistakes so you can easily touch it up with a Q-tip or a small paintbrush. You'll want to wait a few minutes for the paint to dry before you apply the next one on top of it, just enough to prevent it from smudging. The stencil includes several registration cuts to make it easy to line up your repeats. Just make sure not to paint over them so you can see the painted shape underneath. A ceiling filler stencil came in the package to make the job easier, so I taped it up and applied my paint the same way. I worked my way around the wall both vertically and horizontally to minimize the waiting time while the paint was drying. Since I used a light coating of paint, there wasn't much waiting time at all, and I was able to work pretty quickly. I found that spray adhesive wasn't necessary, since the stencil doesn't need to be flat against the wall, and the adhesive won't prevent the paint from bleeding if your roller is too saturated. The corners are definitely the trickiest part, and this is where you'll need your brush. After aligning the stencil, you'll want to tape one side up and push the other into the corner with your free hand. Working with a small space at a time, gently press the brush into the corner until the exposed wall areas have enough color. You'll have to readjust the stencil as you work your way down, and if it's a corner with three walls, you'll probably just have to freehand the design. 
The stencils are flexible and do a good job of bending, so you can be pretty accurate. It's important to keep in mind that this is an art form and imperfections are inevitable. If you're patient and take your time though, you have the best chance of getting those nice, crisp edges. Fortunately, even with some bleeding and uneven paint coverage, you'll be pleasantly surprised at how much the imperfections disappear and everything blends together nicely once you step back a few feet. Once I bring the bed in, some sconce lights and wall art, this stencil will serve as the perfect backdrop and unexpected pop of color and pattern for this little room. And because one stenciled wall is never enough, I came back the next day to give the laundry room its own dose of personality. Wanting a slightly more sophisticated look, I fell in love with the beautiful detailing of the Spanish lace scallop wall stencil. I went with a softer color for a more subtle effect, using Maison Blanche's cobblestone, which is a neutral khaki shade. This time I began my pattern in the middle, so it would be even and symmetrical across the wall. The process was the same here, but it was definitely more of a challenge dealing with three intersecting walls. Luckily, it got easier and I survived the five-hour process. The combination of this pattern and paint color turned out even better than I'd envisioned and took this tiny room to the next level. I've got a lot planned for the rest of this month, so the next episode will be packed with updates. I'll be working on those throughout the Christmas break, so make sure to check in at the end of the month to see all of the changes. In the meantime, you can follow the progress on my Instagram or Facebook linked below. And as always, head to my blog for all of the details, sources, and links from today's video. Happy holidays, and I'll see you soon.